Why is there a need to strengthen the Welsh language provision in health and care? The answer is simple. It's to do with the respect and dignity of the person who needs the care. And if that person isn't comfortable with the language that's used, then the quality of the care could be compromised. And this follow-on strategy to more than just words makes it clear that everybody who works in health and care should not only ask the question, what's the matter with you, but what matters to you? What do you think is the best way of getting the message across to staff at all levels so that this follow-on strategy, its aims are fulfilled? It's really important that we do find a way of conveying this message to all levels of our different organisations in Wales. And the starting point is that there must be leadership from the very top of the organisations. It's very important that this is something that becomes ingrained in the way an organisation is behaving. So I do have expectations for the way a chief executive of a health board will behave and certainly how a director of social services will set out their expectations. If we're going to target at all levels, I think it's really about recognising how the use of language is something that fits with dignity, care and respect for patients and the way in which this is part of their care expectations. And actually, if people want to use their language of choice, that is about delivering care as well as hopefully discharging really excellent treatment in the NHS. The strategy is very much a whole system strategy, building on the original strategy, but making sure that no opportunities are lost in building a service and a workforce that really focuses on what matters to you, matters to us. And the focus being on the active offer, it's the responsibility of the service to ensure that the service that's delivered is in the language that matters to the individual. Do you think there's a need to look again at the planning of the workforce, the way it's done, and also the setting up of organisations to make sure that the importance of Welsh language provision is not overlooked? It's important that although we want to have individuals who can discharge care um, quite rightly across a range of services for the NHS and for the social services sector, that staff do have an appreciation and understanding of actually what it means to work in Wales, where there is a reliance on the Welsh language. Um, and I think we can do that in a number of ways. From my perspective, it's to make sure that people are really aware of the active offer that is to be made. That is about training and communication to staff. But it's also about recognising that organisations need to have bilingual strategies. And actually, for me, it's just a formal part of the induction process for any new individual joining an organisation. How much of a challenge is it to fulfil the aims of this strategy? It is a challenge to ingrain these issues, not least across a large organisation, for example, like the NHS, but actually it is possible. And I think the way it's possible is by making sure that it's individual staff who understand and appreciate what this will mean to the individual patient in front of them. In terms of the council, we offer a lot of support to our staff in terms of improving their Welsh. We offer lessons, we offer support. There's also Welsh language champions like myself across every local authority in Wales that can offer this sort of advice and guidance to staff and managers. There are a number of small, simple things that can be done to improve the number of services available for Welsh speakers. The simple things that homes and managers of care homes can do, they can actually look into Welsh lessons for staff, they can make sure that Welsh language is considered in recruitment. They can actually just buy some Welsh newspapers and put Radio Cymru on. They're all small, simple things that can make a difference to the residents. My name is Bwysig Badovapo and I'm going to talk to you about the travel. My name is Dredi Scrivia, but I'm going to talk to you about the travel. I'm going to talk to you about the travel. Hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? Just a bore da, a thyn yma hynny'n codi cael ona nhw. Mae'n hoffi bod ni'n siarad Cymraeg yma nhw. Yeah. Awel chi'n gael lle defnyddio Cymraeg bob dydd yma? Ydy o'n eich chi'n teimlo fwy cytrefol? O, oh, siŵr, mae o, yn di. Care and language really go together, don't they? They go hand in hand. Care and language absolutely go together in terms of what it means for an individual patient. And we care for many contacts across the whole of the NHS and social care in Wales really important that people understand that this is an individual need to give people support. At times of anxiety, certainly at times of particular treatments like dementia, people will revert to their language of choice and an active offer really needs to be made if you're going to give good treatment for the future and for them to be able to recover. As we've just seen, care and language, they go together. It's impossible to separate them. And the focus of this follow-on framework, to more than just words, is to provide care that meets the needs of the individual, 
rather than just to follow procedures. You can't expect everything to change overnight, but already a lot has been achieved because of the commitment of those working in health and care on a daily basis. Little things can make such a big difference and by remembering to ask those who use the services not only what's the matter with you, but what matters to you, then we'll be well on the way to turning vision into reality. <music>